Hello everyone, I am Chad and this is Amateur Sisto. For those who are returning, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are the first time joining me, thank you so much for joining. And I hope that this experience will be as informative for you as you need it to be. Um, today we'll be talking about me, <laughs> um, what has been happening, my symptoms, how I'm coping with it, how I'm managing PCOS, and at the end, I will tell you about the juice cleanse that I did before I actually started the keto diet. So stay tuned. I'm 27 years old. I think I should say years young, right? Um, either way, 27. I am Jamaican and I was diagnosed with PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome in either 2017 or 2018. Not quite sure. <laughs> it really wasn't that important to me at that time. But let's take it back to 2013 when the symptoms actually started. Um, I was in university, uh, my period came, <laughs> I don't, I can't call it period anymore. Periods are supposed to last for five to seven days, seven max, right? I don't call it period anymore, but my period came and it lasted for 10 months and it's not like part of the month this month part of the month next month i'm talking i'm bleeding every single day sometimes the flow was really really heavy for the most part for the first time that it came in 2013 into 2014 the flow was really heavy at times i was really weak i couldn't attend my classes i was in so much pain a lot of times I went to class and I had to leave just as that class finished, head home and clean up, basically shower again. <laughs> um, I got to find out that I was known as the girl who likes to shower. It wasn't about liking to shower, it was like, what was the alternative, right? Um, I was wearing tampons and pads at the same time and still getting messed up within the space of an hour and a half or two. It was really heavy until my skin just started to become really pale. And when I returned to Jamaica in 2014, my mom was like, you look like you're short of blood. It was a normal at the, at the, at the weather because where I was, it was really cold. Um, I, yeah, I knew I was um, anemic by that time, but I just didn't want to worry her because I hadn't told her about it just yet. Um, but by the time I got here, it had stopped, it kind of, had stopped no it had stopped and i wasn't seeing any periods at all so that's how it worked for me that was the first set of symptoms that i was seeing i prolonged periods of heavy moderate to heavy flow and then periods where i just don't have a period at all and the times when i don't have periods it's like it's a relief for me because i'm like i don't have to be going through that because oftentimes i just feel dirty I feel, I don't know how to put this, like, it's more of an emotional thing for me because I just feel like someone who is incontinent, you know, someone who can't control themselves, always messing up, that's how, that's how I always feel like, and it's just emotionally draining for me, I don't know why, it just makes me feel useless as a person because how are you always messing up? Or is your bed always messing up? You know, and even from taking all these precautions, it's just a, it's just a mental strain that it has had. So when it, the period doesn't come, and sometimes for two, three months, I think the most I've ever been without a period is probably four months. Those times I'm really happy. I'm like, and it's not healthy when you're not seeing your periods, right? We know that. But it was a relief from the prolonged bleeding. And the second time the prolonged bleeding came, it was, I think, in 2015. And that one lasted for six months. And it was about that time I stopped, 
stopped keeping track of how long these periods lasted because I don't know. And and at the, at the second time, I'm not sure if the the bleeding wasn't as heavy or it wasn't as mentally draining or it was just I was trying to get used to it and I was in school and the first time I'd missed a couple classes wasn't good and I didn't want to miss any more classes. So I don't know if it was a kind of mental block. Um, so I'm not sure if it was as bad or it wasn't, but it was just more focused on not having the same thing repeat that had happened in 2013 into 2014. And then again, periods of no period at all, and the cycle kind of continues. But after that six month, it, it, it was never that long again, probably three months, probably four months, but never that long again, even though three months and four, it's still long, but never that long but then came 2020 hello um in may may of 2020 it started and hello <laughs> i'm still bleeding every day and it's january 2021 and this year is it has been especially harder emotionally on me because the bleeding is so much heavier and uh, I have really intense migraines. <laughs> That's a whole nother thing, but my pressure was elevated in 2020. Um, I was just undergoing a lot of stress, still am. And I can, I can tell when that happens because when I get the migraines, uh, the first time I noticed that that is what happens when my pressure is elevated, um, probably was it the same 2018 period when I went to the doctor at that point. The story is all over the place. It's not cohesive, I know. So probably in 2017 or 18 when I went, when I was officially diagnosed, my pressure was elevated as well. And I was telling the doctor that my migraine, I've been having really severe headaches. And normally I have headaches every day. This has been happening for years. Of course, there are times when I get a break from these headaches, but this time it was every day for such a long time. And I realized that over the period of about one and a half weeks, the headache wasn't actually going. It was just the intensity decreased, but it was there. That was the first time that has ever happened. I mean, I have my migraines, they go, they come back, but it's never just, you know, there. At a, at a less intense level but still there like lingering so much was going on i was just like that was it my health was not ever, like it was not a thing that i considered or because it just had so much going on and in my mind which is not really good my health wasn't my main concern and I mean, if you don't have health how are you gonna you know function in life but that wasn't my main concern i just have so much going on in the health thing so Anyways, I finally went to the doctor. My mom insisted. I went to the doctor and pressure was elevated and got some tablets. The doctor diagnosed me with PCOS. He put me on metformin. Gave me pills for my migraine. Told me I needed to see a dietitian. Diet, 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 dietitian. <laughs> oh, I hope that's the correct pronunciation. I didn't go see the dietitian. I didn't have the money and these are my concerns right but fast forward to 2020 again the migraine was lingering i didn't go back to the doctor but it was really getting bad and the stress levels weren't decreasing things just kept happening and things just weren't working out and my health was just not in a good place and migraines are getting too intense every day and the bleeding was just too much and then the stress of the bleeding and messing up and having to change sheets and washing more often than I wanted to wash, having to be in and out of the shower more time for the day than I would want to be. It was just mentally draining and that kind of stress also caused the migraines to be worse. It was just a whole cycle and I've been wanting to really go on a weight loss journey to be healthier so I could actually feel better about myself, about my body. But I just never, I've started quite a few times and just not completed it. 
um but i think in in in, in november to in october leading into november of 2020 i just i know i had to make a change because what i'm doing is not working i'm in a constant state of stress my body is reacting to that stress and i'm doing nothing to relieve that stress and something has to something has to change the stress is there the situation is causing the stress is there but something has to change you have to work on what can be worked on and that right there was my health and so i decided to do some more research around PCOS and weight loss because losing weight is never really easy for me gaining weight <laughs> gaining weight is not even a challenge and also it's um and what makes it worse is that too what makes the weight gain worse is that i stress eat so i, I have to you know put, highlight that it's not just the peacocks i stress eat so that too it causes the of course causes the excess weight gain so i decided to really do some research about peacocks try to get really invested looking up um research about it looking up pages on Instagram and, and Facebook that are dedicated to people with PCOS and um, wanting to just learn more and be healthier. And uh, some information I found out was about a juice cleanse and it probably was a juice cleanse was supposed to just last a week. I did for the whole month of November and that was not fun. So I really started to do some research into it and I found um, recommendations of keto diet and a vegan diet and I decided to try the keto diet first but like I said I did the juice cleanse before I started and started exercising as well. I had a trainer for one month, the month of November and he was quite helpful. I'll talk more about the exercises on Friday. I really realized I needed to make a change because what I'm currently doing is not helping and my migraines are just too much to handle and um, my body's getting used to all <laughs> the over-the-counter painkillers that are there. I mean, what, what seems to work for me now is the Advil liquid gel and if my migraine is really bad, I have to take four at once and I don't like having to do that because I've been taking pills for so long for my migraines. I can't take Panadol anymore, that doesn't do anything. Any other over-the-counter thing here in Jamaica that's offered really doesn't do much. I'd have to take a lot of it and I don't want that. So what I had been doing lately for about two years is just not take the pills unless it's really bad. And that's the worst thing because migraine is really bad taking the pills when it's at its peak. <laughs> but I really was trying not to be on the pills so often because I was just, I'm really, I'm a person who's afraid of addiction. Like I'm terrified really terrified of addiction really really terrified and that's one of the things when i was in med school that i was afraid of like oh my god when i eventually become a doctor and i kind of have access to these pain meds what am i going to do with these migraines that's always something that's at the back of my head that i was really scared about i never really talked about i think i told one person while i was in med school i was like when that is one thing i fear so much because my migraines are so intense and then yep access and i didn't want to have to be taking something stronger just so i could function on my job you get what i'm saying i'm not a doctor now <laughs> i didn't get to finish my school let's get that out of the way but that was always a fear of mine and coming on to that i try to reduce the amount of pills i take normally i just want to feel the headache coming on and i just i take the pill i always have pills <laughs> but then i had to stop that because i didn't want to be reliant so much on the pills and I tried to tough it out. People know that you can't just tough out migraines. So with the juice cleanse, I thought it would have been um, harder because remember when I don't eat on time, that triggers my migraines. Strong smells trigger my migraines. When I'm stressed, of course, um, the place is too loud. The light is too bright. As you can see, <laughs> um, my room is basically painted in a lighter shade of brown if it were up to me it would have been a darker shade of brown my curtains are between dark and light brown and i rarely use my light it's just like if i need to search for something or if i'm doing an assignment or something and i actually need the light but really i don't use my light that much i just don't like the light it's just too much for my eyes and even the sun right now because of the natural lighting <laughs> 
the sun is just it's really annoying with my eyes having to face outside but you know girls gotta do what the girls gotta do <laughs> almost bit my tongue saying that so with the migraines i just i really thought that juice cleanse would have been harder because when i don't eat on time the headache comes as well so um i thought it would have been a little harder going on the juice cleanse but when i started it was okay i mean hungry of course always and then the stress and you want to stress eat but the juice cleanse was really good and when i was on the juice cleanse i didn't have any migraine like for the month of november i didn't have any headaches at all so that was good so the headaches also were brought on by my diet so what i was eating that also helps to trigger migraines you get what i'm saying so that was good i was feeling good i was exercising well and what i did on my juice cleanse was i used a mixture of different juice because like i said it was the only thing i was drinking of the thing i was consuming so i wanted to have different things so i i'll show you um i <laughs> my videos of when i'm preparing the meals or when i'm blending the juice won't be as um <laughs> beautiful as those videos that you see where they drop the thing in it's me to just a one cameraman <laughs> show and i don't have a stand or anything so some of the other things are not seen there but i'm trying to i'll try to post them nonetheless um but mainly i used a uh, beetroot um ginger lemon celery kale tomatoes cucumbers apple cider vinegar and avocado so I, I mix them different ways and um it, it was really the cleanse was really good i was feeling better i wasn't having acid reflux i was feeling kind of lighter like i said no migraines or anything and i did that for a month and honestly i don't recommend doing it for a month i had a lot of school work to do and all that and it wasn't lovely feeling that drain and that type because remember i'm not eating any carbs or anything so that energy is not there i'm exercising four times for the week and so i don't recommend for persons to go through the entire month i was just being extreme because i wanted quick so that was good i was feeling good i was exercising and in my head and i guess why i always not so consistent with this weight loss journey weight loss journeys that I've taken on before is because I think I want quick results. I want to have that snapback result. Like, you know, when you're scrolling through Instagram or Facebook, you always see the before and after. You're not seeing the journey. And that was one of the reasons why I decided to create the channel as well, because I wanted to provide a medium where persons can actually see me going through this journey, see the changes that, changes that I'll be making as I go along. And I'm not... um. I'm saying that these journeys that other persons have gone on are less valid. I'm not saying that. It's just sometimes you just want to be on the journey with the person instead of just seeing the before and after. Commend you, of course, for, you know, sticking through with it and being healthier, you know, and being happier with you, you know. But it's, I think that was lacking for me. And probably I didn't search hard enough because probably if I did search hard enough, I would have found a channel or found a page that actually has a progress. Well, um... I signed up for X28, RI28, um, and there's a Facebook support group, and you get to see that progress that people are making when they post their weekly updates, something like that, like a community like that. Um, probably if I searched hard on YouTube, I would have found a channel that actually has the person's journey from they started. If I searched, searched hard enough, I probably would have found one. But I'm just saying, you know, this YouTube channel, I think it would kind of help me to be accountable to, because if I have onlookers you know and persons probably who want to start the journey with me i cannot slack off you know i have to do what i said i was going to do so it's kind of a thing to kind of hold me accountable and not try to slip back as much as it's really <laughs> um tempting to slip back because of the stress <laughs> i want to stay through i want to say i want to stay true to this journey <laughs> I want to stay true to this journey, see through to the end, be healthier, have more regular periods, you know, um, because as it is now, it's just not healthy. And yeah. December, I started to eat um, food, go on the keto diet, and 
I kind of fell off the wagon there in the Christmas period and I'm getting back on the wagon now here. So that is really where I'm at right now. Also, when I was doing my research, I mean, there's Pico Support JA, that Instagram page that I find. So that's good that, you know, in Jamaica here, we have that support group. I hope more persons know about it, you know, and know that there, because I didn't know about it before now, or a couple of days ago, or probably two or three weeks, two weeks ago or so. Like I said, probably if I was searching hard enough, I would have found these things or found um, a channel or a Facebook page or something with a black person who um, is going through their own journey with PCOS. And I'm not um, invalidating other persons from other races who are going through, but our genetic makeup is different. And it's good to, you know, see it from our perspective. And so when you look at the meal plans and stuff, they have all these expensive food on the meal plan that i can't afford <laughs> and so what i want to do to with this channel channel is try to find um kind of cheaper substitutes here in jamaica that can have the same effect in the keto diet you know just from a, per a perspective of a person who really doesn't have all that um all the resources to go on one of these diets and you have because healthy eating can be really expensive so that's another reason too I decided to do this channel. Like I said, maybe if I searched hard and long on YouTube and on Facebook and on Insta, I'd probably find someone who is doing just the same. Sharing sharing your journey whenever and however you shared it. We're grateful for this because then through your journey, we have that access to information of what works and what doesn't work. Because I'm learning so much more because I really didn't get much info from my doctor. But this because thing, it was just like metformin, see dietitian, lose weight. And I'm not saying that the weight loss isn't important. It is. Whether we have PCOS or not, being a healthy is important. But now I'm just trying to learn more. And as I learn more, I want to share more with you. And, you know, I want to build a community or... And I'm not saying that one doesn't exist. Because like I said, PCOS support JA on Instagram. You guys can find them. Um, but I just want to build this community where, you know, we can always share our thoughts. Um, you know, know that we have someone who's supporting us, not being afraid to say, okay, I fell off. I cheated on my diet or something. And just knowing that there's no one here to judge you. We just want to encourage you, you know, hold each other's hands through this journey because it can be really stressful. And when we talk about the symptoms of PCOS and all that, you, you'll, you'll, you'll realize that it can cause people to become depressed and you know mental health is equally important for all of us so you know i just want us to you know know that you're not alone as you would know and again like i said previously PCOS is not your fault but we have to manage it you know we have to make a decision to become healthier because based on the research that i have been doing and based on testimonials from other persons that i have been seeing and following on their pages once we really truly manage a PCOS with the type of PCOS we have we can get rid of the symptoms it almost completely you know persons who are trying to get pregnant you have testimonials of persons who have PCOS and, and they got pregnant you know things like this so it is possible it is hard it is going to be a challenging journey, but you have sisters out here who are willing to be there with you, to encourage you, to share the information with you, you know, and just be each other's support, right? So yeah, so that is basically my intro. That is basically what I just wanted to say, say about me. So on Wednesday now, I'll go more about, go into more details about what PCOS is, what the symptoms are, how it's managed because there is no cure, what research is saying, what are best practices. Um, but as you can see, and I, and I have also have eczema. So <laughs> with all them things with PCOS and my face, you know, so, and, um, you might be wondering, can she like put on some makeup or whatever? Um, normally in my day-to-day -day life, I don't wear makeup. I probably I probably have on a lip gloss and I put it on for you guys. 
um i have a mascara that i think if it could expire it would i'm not even sure probably expire um i had some powder it probably expired i brought it with me when i returned in jamaica, to jamaica again in 2017. i don't even know where to find it because i'm in general as bad as my face would get i'm just really not a makeup person i don't have anything against makeup i've just and i wouldn't even know where to begin to put on makeup <laughs> and also i outside of the fact that i don't normally wear makeup i wanted to be as authentic as possible because i was thinking oh my god i probably should just go up to my sis my sister and borrow her concealer and just conceal out some of these and hide conceal hide right some of these things but this is my face right now this is how it is and uh, i'm working on it and it will improve got to believe that it will improve so i'm just coming to you as i am you know not very flattering so and like i said everything is a process and everything is a journey like this face here just at 27 a couple weeks ago started a skincare regime regime regime, regime. <laughs> routine just at 27 and i'm gonna talk about it to happen so basically this is just a i'm sorry i'm the the thoughts were not organized but that's how my head is i think this was really coherent because i wanted to write them down and try to memorize it like a script and then reproduce it but my sister gave me a feedback on the the intro video and she was like this looks this seems like a bit rehearsed and I'm like, yeah, it was kind of rehearsed because I basically wrote down what I wanted to say and memorized it section by section and said it because I ramble a lot. And um, even though I know that I'm alone in this room, the fact that I'm singing to the camera makes me really nervous and really shy because I'm not a socialite. I'm, I, I, I border on a social. <laughs> So this is really nerve wracking, even though I'm the only one here in the room and stuff. So I, I didn't want to be rambling. I wanted to have coherent thoughts, but then I was like, I don't want it to sound too scripted like my sister said it sounded. So Corvette, Corvette. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to me ramble on. Thank you for watching to the end. Thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in and if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can be informed when i post my my next videos but like i said i'll be posting on wednesday as well as on friday next week monday wednesday friday um and the cycle continues so thank you guys share this with someone you know also has speak us and just like let's go on this journey i am learning i'm not an expert at anything i'm just learning along the way and sharing what I'm learning and sharing how it's been helping me as I go on. So thank you. God bless you. Have a prosperous 2021 and take care. See you soon.